Hello everybody, it's Catherine from Jane Catherine on Books and I'm here with uh, an author spotlight. This is a new series I'm going to be doing and um, bringing you some of my favourite authors or new authors to me and to give them a go, read a few of their books all in one month hopefully, all in one go. So uh, without further ado, let's... Um, Let's do a drum roll for this month's author, Kate Atkinson. Now, I mentioned Kate Atkinson briefly in, I think it was my last video or video before, when I went out for a walk with Nelson and came back with some books from the charity, uh, the, the charity table that's outside somebody's house. And I actually picked this one up. This was the Costa Novel Award 2013. Now, Kate Atkinson is Kate Atkinson MBE, so member of the British Empire. So, uh, yeah, high praise indeed. And um, first novel behind the scenes at the museum, which I'm going to come on to that. Didn't realise that was her first novel. So this is about, and I, I did give you a brief synopsis of it in my last video, but in 1910, a baby born and dies before she can take her first breath. Then again in 1910, the same baby is born, but she lives to tell the tale. What if there were second chances and third chances? In fact, an infinite, infinite number of chances to live your life. Would you eventually be able to save the world from its own inevitable destiny? Or would you even want to? So I think this is going to be a good one. I think it's food for thought. Um, there are many pages, many pages, many pages. 600 and... Let's have a look if that's not author's notes. It is. I don't want to be giving you author's notes. numbers. There's two little pages at the back repeating the beginning, about 608. So, uh, yeah, the pretty hefty books, but uh, I'm up for the challenge. Then next one book I have read, so I'll probably leave this till last. So if I don't manage it, I've already read it and I think I gave it five stars. This is Behind the Scenes at the Museum. This is the one that I was trying to remember when I was uh, talking about life after life. There's something about a museum or whatever. Couldn't remember the title. It's not about a museum. So, yeah, don't be fooled into thinking, oh, if that's about a museum, I don't think it's for me. It's not about a museum. It's a family saga. And, you know, you that have been here a while, you know, I love a good family saga. And to all my new subscribers, welcome, welcome. If you love a good family saga, there's plenty here. Plenty here in the books, not family saga in our own family saga. We live quite life these days, now we're getting older. <laughs> and the kids have all flown the nest. They'll have got their own family sagas, won't they? So um, this, I remember it was an excellent read. I remember it did sort of get me there can't remember too much on the details, uh, but Ruby Lennox was conceived grudgingly by Bunty and born while her father George was in the dog and hare in Doncaster, telling a woman in an emerald dress and a D cup that he wasn't married. Mm. Doncaster, goodness me, that's in South Yorkshire. And uh, yeah, when we did our nurse training in Sheffield, we often go, used to go on nightclub trips to Doncaster. So yeah. Bunty had never wanted to marry George, but here she was stuck with three little girls in a flat above the pet shop. In an ancient street beneath York Minster, so it's all very relevant seeing as we're about 30 miles from York now, Ruby tells the story of the family from the day at the end of the 19th century when a travelling photographer catches frail beautiful Alice and her children. Like flowers in amber to the startling, witty and memorable events of her own life. Uh, and I'll put a little tab in here. Body of out-of-body experience. Evidence of out-of-body experience. I don't remember that, so that's interesting. So that's behind the scenes at the museum. And then finally, so I have three on my shelves. How many pages was that? Because this looks quite chunky as well. 490. Oh, 
So 600 and odd, 490, so that's a 500. And then life after life, that's 600 and odd, then 500. And then finally, the one I got another charity shop find was Big Sky. Now, I didn't realise that this is one of a series and it's quite far down in the series. This is the Jackson Brody. Uh, he's a detective, I believe. And as soon as I've got it, I'm going to give it a try. See if it, it stands up in its own merit without being um, having to have read the others in the series, shall we say. Because there are quite a few case histories, one good turn, when will there be good news and started early, took my dog uh, and then Big Sky. So we'll see. It probably just, you know, is a good standalone detective mystery. So Jackson Brody has relocated to a quiet seaside village in North Yorkshire lives up the road from us, didn't like to let on. In the occasional company of his recalcitrant teenage son Nathan and ageing Labrador Dido, both at the discretion of his former partner Julia. It's a picturesque setting but there's something darker lurking behind the scenes. Jackson's current job, gathering proof of an unfaithful husband for a suspicious wife, seems straightforward but a chance encounter with a desperate man on a crumbling cliff leads him across a sinister network and back into the path of someone from his past. I really like the sounds of that. That sounds like a really good mystery. And I do like a good uh, detective. And uh, probably it's not a police procedural because it sounds as if he uh, has retired and gone into one of these, you know, how they go into uh, working as consultants or, you know, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of pages there to be read. Uh, so I can't see that I'll be picking many other books in July. Let's have a look how many pages is in this one. 471. So there's about 1500 pages in that lot. So I think I've got plenty to be going on with there. I think it'll be interesting um one to to look at because i do feel that obviously i've not read any of the jackson brody uh and that's the series but i do feel that she does write um about different subjects and i feel as if they're all interesting they all you know the family drama a detective and then this let's have a look at uh, second chances a bit of a, a split time narrative all three different uh, types of, of uh, plot line and we'll see how she uh, how she flows everything together so thank you for joining me these are going to form part of my July TBR I'm going to come up with just a few other ideas that I may read as well as just to sort of ring the changes but as I say because they all are quite different I think that'll just be like reading three different three different book titles from different authors really so thank you for joining me don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next video take care out there bye for now